for the last day of November. I'm Zaya Top. And I'm Dan Risk, and we're exploring all kinds of cool stuff today from a mega bridge in Denmark to the secret of how sharks move so fast. We'll even check out a duck that shoots flames from its head. And that is obviously going to be on Weird Planet. Obviously. But first, we kick off today's show with a rare look behind the scenes at Canada's Wonderland just north of Toronto. That's where they're building what will be the tallest roller coaster in Canada. So check this out. This is how you engineer a scream. Roller coaster enthusiasts just can't get enough of this. You'd probably never catch me jumping out of a plane with a parachute strapped to my back, but if you wanted me to ride the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world, I would definitely do that. I've visited more than 30 parks in North America, and I've ridden over 250 different roller coasters. Jeff Smelly likes them so much, he runs a website about them. Recently, he got wind that something was going on at Canada's Wonderland. The uh, enthusiast group in the community that uh, like rides are always on the lookout for clues. And um, the park put up a fence around a, an area, and that day our website traffic tripled. And that's when the speculation started about what Wonderland had up their sleeves. Project manager Peter Switzer knows exactly what's up Wonderland's sleeve. We're drilling footings for the new Leviathan roller coaster here at Canada's Wonderland. We've got a 306 foot high Leviathan roller coaster, steel coaster, the biggest in Canada, one of the biggest roller coasters in the world. My first reaction was really shock. I couldn't believe it. They took the record for tallest and fastest roller coaster in 2008 with Behemoth, and then they had never had that record taken away from them by any other park. They decided to take away their own record and go even taller and even faster again. You start at a height of 306 feet, 80 degree drop. It's virtually straight down. It's not directly straight down, but it's going to be quite a drop. You'll be floating in your seat for sure. A 30 story drop of sheer terror. And almost as terrifying, putting the highest piece on this monster. It's the top of the lift. Quite a heavy lift. They're rigging it here behind me as I speak. There's a lot of preparation, a lot of anxiety about lifting these heavy things high in the sky. It's a difficult day for the crew, but Peter's been wrestling with this giant for some time. We are an existing park, as everybody knows, so we had to try and find a spot that it would fit. And once we had that spot, we had to deal with all the details of making it work. Everybody looks at a roller coaster and sees it standing there, but they don't think of how it integrates with the landscape. Each of these columns needs to be planted in the ground, and we got to make sure that we don't have any interferences with existing structures like the Dragonfire coaster. So after a bunch of back and forth with the manufacturer, we were able to provide this. Amazingly, it's the same company that built Behemoth, one of the top design companies in the world. It should be an incredibly smooth, incredibly intense, fantastic ride. The footings are going to support 153 pieces of track. Of all the track pieces, these ones are the trickiest to put in place. Three pieces lead to the peak, and the final piece is an arch. Without it in place, there is no support. Today, these four pieces have to be installed before the cranes can move away. We can't leave any weight on the hook overnight. These are huge track sections. Weighing up to 30 tons, four cranes have been squished into this small area just to lift them up. This is something new to us. The tricky part is we're going uphill, everything is on an angle, and before that piece leaves the ground, we have to make sure that it's set at the right angle so when it's up there, it's the surfaces make properly. It's like a very large geometric puzzle. These guys have to get the angle just right. We're at 21.2. It's bouncing back and forth a little bit because it's a live load right now on the crane, but 21.2 is the angle that we checked up there on the piece that's already erected and we want to match this so the two surfaces come together perfectly. If it's not on the right angle, the men in the air will be fighting with the piece a lot harder than they need to and you can see the track connections. If it's not at the right angle, when those two come together, it'll wreck the connection and a bad connection means high maintenance on the wheels, I'm told, and it costs the park a lot of money. The sooner the day is done, the better. It's cold and the wind is starting to pick up. Up there, if you're not uh, holding on, it'll blow you over. So it's like being on a ship out on the sea. It's a heavy gale. The second piece takes a lot more work to get ready. It's only 28. 
It's got to go up. This piece is a little trickier with the walkway on the side that weighs 10,000 pounds, so it influences the roll of the piece. It makes it a little trickier to get it uh, on level. I'm concerned about their safety and, and having to receive those pieces and bolt them into place. That's always our prime concern is the safety of the workers, obviously. But there's no turning back now. These pieces are so heavy, the cranes have to hold everything in place until it's finished, or the whole thing will sag. It'll drop seven inches, so when you go to put your next piece in, it makes the ride too short and your gap too small and it won't fit. As the last pieces go into place, things are really looking up. It's a big day today, yeah? Not every day you build a roller coaster 300 feet in the air. A good day for the workers, and the coaster enthusiasts are revved up. I believe it's in the top five tallest and fastest roller coasters of all time, and it'll open here in our backyard where we can ride it over and over again.